Welcome to the next video in the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Basics Differential Equations series. Um, this video we're going over an application of uh, four stamped oscillations, which, uh, of, which is actually an application of second order uh, linear differential equations. So in this case, our force is just limited to being um, some sinusoidal force. So we have like a motor or a engine driving our force. And really not much to it. The, the way to solve this is find your particular, find your complementary solution, add the two together, and you have your, uh, uh, and then you have your x as a function of t. The only thing to, to note in this more physical case is we're switching gears kind of from y as a function of x to x as a function of t. Um, just think of this as like physical representation. So you have your position as a function of time. So um, not really much else to the, to the theory behind this. Uh, we're just going to jump into uh, to an example. So here um, we're given our constants, mass, uh, damping coefficient, and spring coefficient. Uh, and we're also given our force as a function of time, which is 10 cosine of 3t. First thing we're going to want to do uh, is to check, check how damped this system is. So um, uh, c squared. So we have c squared is equal to 16, and 4mk is also equal to 16. And so since these two are equal, we have a critically damped case. Um, so now all we have to do is set up our second order differential equation, solve for the complementary, and solve for the particular uh, solutions, add this together, and we have x as a function of time. And if you recall, for solving the complementary part, all we do is set this equal to zero and solve it as we would a uh, usual second order homogeneous differ differential equation. And so going from this to our characteristic equation, And of course, since this is a critically damped case, we have our two roots equal. And um, because our um, characteristic equation will give us roots equal to negative 2. So let's just write out what x sub c is equal to. So we have x sub c is equal to c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 times t times e to the negative 2t. Um, so that's the straightforward part. I, you might, you've done this uh, before. Now let's just hop into the newer part, which is finding the particular solution. So our first guess, using the method of undetermined coefficients, is going to be uh, the particular equation is equal to uh, a cosine 3t plus b sine of 3t. And the whole point of undetermined coefficients is we're going to solve for a and b. And you might be asking yourself, why don't we solve for uh, c1 and c2? And that's because we don't have our initial condition uh, quite yet. Or we actually never will in this e equation just to save time and save money, I guess. Uh, so uh, we're going to differentiate this and differentiate what we differentiated again. So we can have x double prime, x prime, and x. And oh, one thing to keep in mind is since uh, a cosine of 3t plus b sine of 3t is completely linearly uh, independent from these, we don't have to worry about uh, adding, it, like multiplying through it by x to make them linearly independent. 
So I'm going to go ahead and erase this and plug in and s solve for A and B. And so what I've done is just, I've written, uh, so this is x double prime, this is 4 times x prime, and this is um, just 4 times x p, x sub p. Um, and keep in mind this is all equal to 10 cosine of 3t, but what we're going to do first is just simplify by adding together, um, well that did nothing. Uh, by adding together our, our sine parts and our cosine parts. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we have... 12b here minus negative uh, 9a plus 4a is minus 5a cosine 3t. And then we have negative uh, 12a here. And then minus 9b plus 4b uh, is negative 5b times sine of 3t is equal to cosine of 3t. And what we're going to do is just match up the coefficients. So So we have this cosine part is going to be equal to that cosine coefficient, and this sine part is going to be equal to zero because there's no sine part in our um, in our f of t. So yeah, we're just going to have a, a two equations for two unknowns and solve that system of equations. Um, so, after all these, this just doing algebra, we have uh, a is equal to negative 50 over 119, and b is like 1.008, so it's just going to call that 1 to make thing, our life easier. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to plug this in and uh, combine that with our complementary solution and take a look at kind of what that tells us about our um, situation. So here we have um, c, uh, x as a function of t is equal to so our x uh, complementary and our x particular. And what one thing to notice is we're just going to look at n behavior. So as t gets very, very big, this part is going to go um, to 0. Uh, this part is going to go to zero, and this part is just going to keep oscillating as sines and cosines do. Um, so what we have is a transient and steady state part, and it's going to just uh, damp off at, at the end because of this uh, force damped oscillation. Um, so that's pretty much always going to happen. You're going to have a transient and a steady state. Um, part of your, of your x as a function of t. Um, in the case, there's one case that you should be um, forewarned about, and that's if you have an undamped um, oscillator, so there's, there's no c, and you have some force that, um, let's say the force oscillates at the same uh, oscillation rate as your system. So, what that's going to do is 
Um, it's going to oscillate, but the two oscillations are just going to build up on each other, and you'll and so the amplitude of the oscillation is just going to get bigger and bigger, uh, and that causes bridges and buildings to break. So if you're um, and and some kind of engineer, then you have to be uh, wor worried about that kind of stuff. But um, so, when does this happen? As I mentioned before, um, you're going to have an undamped force, uh, an undamped system with some force on it, and this omega kind of squeezes and stretches out your your sine or cosine wave. So um, so that's uh, what we're going to be looking at is when those uh, we're going to have an omega here from the uh, particular solution. Um, if you recall, so like so, if you recall, we're going to have uh, this omega is going to find itself in the particular solution. Uh, we just want to make sure that we don't get the same omega for our complementary solution. And keep in mind, k over m is omega squared, since omega is the square root of k over m. So, um, right. So our, we're going to have uh, for our, comp uh, our complementary solution, we have r squared plus omega squared is equal to zero. So, as long as uh, your k over m, uh, the square root of k over m does not equal what you're given here, then you're not going to need to worry about uh, resonance happening in your system. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you a, another way to solve these kinds of differential equations that you might find easier, you might find it more tedious. Uh, anyways, next video, we're going to go over Laplace transforms. And um, you can find uh, the next video link here. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out the rest of the playlist of the differential equation series, or visit our website where you can find our amazing differential equations with linear algebra textbook. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.